Hello and welcome to the One Life Church devotional series where we cover the entire Bible in 20 months. Well, today's chapters are Joshua chapter 16 and 17. We're back at the allotment of land to the 12 tribes of Israel. And it's been quite tedious, hasn't it? These parcels of land being apportioned to each family. Now, today's readings give me to think about two things. Firstly, I think back on what this inheritance actually means to you and me. You know, the language of the Old Testament inheritance runs through into the New, and we saw that that pertains to our inheritance when we die. It also pertains to our inheritance here on earth as we relate to the Lord. So His promises are part of our inheritance. He Himself is part of our inheritance, or actually the most part of our inheritance. And then His gifts, His gift of peace, His gift of love, these are part of our inheritance that we participate in as believers. But there's an other issue that I I failed to mention the other day. It's people. If you can read the Psalm, Psalm 2 says, Ask of me and I will give you the nations as your inheritance. Which doesn't mean that God's going to give you an island or a continent. Now when he talks about nations like that, he's talking about people. People. Ask and I'll give you people. What does that mean? It means people coming to faith. That's what it means. It means when you pray for your family members and they get saved, not only are they a biological family now, they're part of your inheritance, your spiritual inheritance. Same with every other person that you trust God for. Every time we plant a church, every time we plant a site, trusting God for the nations, it's part of our inheritance. Secondly, today's readings are particularly about the household of Joseph. Now, the curious thing is that Joseph wasn't a tribe. Remember, Joseph was one of the 12 brothers, but God blessed him doubly. You go look at the end of Genesis as Jacob blesses Joseph and blesses his sons. And it's like Joseph is moved aside and his two sons, Manasseh and Ephraim, become the other two tribes in Israel. So now if you take 11 brothers, you remove Joseph and you add his two sons as the 12 tribes of Israel, they're actually 13, aren't they? And so why is it that the Bible talks about the 12 tribes of Israel? Well, what we saw in Numbers and in Deuteronomy is that the tribe of Levi was excluded as a tribe. It was a tribe, it was the priestly tribe, but it was excluded from receiving land. So in Numbers 1, 2, 13, and 26, Levi is excluded when the list of tribes is given. Curiously, there's another place where it's also mentioned 12 tribes, but Levi is included, but there are two other tribes removed. Dan and Ephraim, and Joseph is put in place of Ephraim. And you think, well, that's in the book of Revelation. That's in Revelation 7. Again, still, the 12 tribes, because that's God's heart, the 12 tribes. But that, So the, the, there's this interchange. Now, why did that happen? Well, Dan and Ephraim, one of Joseph's sons, and Dan lived side by side. And you'll read then in Revelation chapter 7 what happened in, I think it was Judges 7, Dan said, we don't like the land that's been given us. We don't like our inheritance. So they left the land and they moved past their neighbors, Ephraim, and they were engaged in idolatry. So the idolatry in Ephraim and the idolatry that Dan absorbed became like apostasy. And it's like, that's caused them to be excluded from the inheritance. You can't be worshipping other gods and be inheriting from God. And so, as we look at this family of Joseph, he had two sons. And the tribe of Ephraim went wayward. But the tribe of um, Manasseh kept its course. As we look at our tribes, I'm standing here in our, our family hallway. I don't know if you've seen these things before, but they're the list of birthdays in our family. A family, like you can see, you've got as many descendants as a rabbit here. And on each of these months, we send gifts to this particular family. It's, it's part of our family tradition. Now, if you look at your family line, and those that are beyond you, 
you can't make their decisions for them. But you can pray and say, God, give me and my sons and my daughters the inheritance that you promised. And that promise includes eternity. That promise includes friends. That promise includes the nations. That promise includes the peace of God, the promises of God. It's a beautiful thing. As we look beyond our generation, let's pray that our descendants walk in the inheritance God ordained for them.